Man, Tyrese Halliburton has been spectacular for the Pacers this season and has honestly been the best player for them since the trade deadline. Unfortunately, his high level of play isn't translating the wins as his supporting cast is pretty much lackluster. You know, we got Malcolm Brogdon, TJ Warren, Miles Turner, and TJ McConnell. You know, all of our important pieces right there. Injury right now, so we do have some role players playing. You know, Gogo Bidadze, uh, Jalen Smith, who's been amazing. Buddy Heald, you know, we got all these guys. And overall, the, the roster has been so bad. But in all this, Halliburton, he transformed from the second option on the Kings to this franchise caliber point guard who can lead this team for the future and can honestly change them for the better. And the Pacers do need to make sure that they build around him and get the right pieces. And today we're going to talk about why Tyree Halliburton has been amazing for the Pacers this season and the reason for his recent success. So what's up? My name is Pacers Empire. If you like the video, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it. And let's get into the video. So... Halliburton this season with the Kings and the Pacers has been very amazing and is a player who is very underrated when people talk about some of the best point guards in the league. Halliburton isn't a name mentioned at all, which is pretty absurd. You know, his ability to play on ball defense while also being able to dish out some dimes and play some great offense is very underrated and he is around 6'5", 185 pounds. So he can play the point guard slash the shooting guard position if he wants to. He's a little bit underweight, but in time that can pretty much change because he's only like 20 years old, I want to say. Yeah, Tyrese Halliburton, he's a sophomore, obviously being the 12th pick in the 2020 draft by the Kings. I'm not too sure why the Kings would even trade him at this point. You know, he was their second best player behind De'Aaron Fox. And I don't even know. I mean, the the Kings aren't that much better than the Pacers right now, you know, with, you know, Halliburton being 22 right now, the Kings aren't that much better and they could really use his expertise and, you know, dishing out dimes and scoring overall. So, and also his on-ball defense is something that's going to be pretty underrated in this game too. So last night against the Celtics, he dropped around 30 points, two assists, one rebound and three steals. Great game overall. The game overall was very tough to watch, you know, because it was just Tyrese Halliburton running the ball for most of the game. And then, you know, having Lance Stevenson there sometimes running the point guard. But then everyone else was kind of just lackluster. Uh, Jalen Smith played pretty well. Buddy Heald didn't play very well. Uh, Badadze played pretty okay. And overall, we're, we are just playing some like G League talent slash role player talent. And it's just very apparent to see this team struggle because looking at the players right now, we don't have anyone that's going to be an all-star slash a superstar maybe Halliburton an all-star caliber player but outside of him there's nothing too much there and Halliburton over the season is averaging around 15 points per game four rebounds and eight assists those are some very solid stats for a sophomore who went 12th in the draft like I said in the 2020 draft his shooting splits are also heavily underrated as he's shooting around 47 percent from the field and 42 percent from three he's been very efficient this season and has the ability to post up 20 point games at any given time he's going to be a player that's going to give you assists and points one night you know and then other nights gonna give you assists and no points or vice versa so his jumper is a little bit wonky as it isn't as smooth as other shots in the league you know looking at some of the best shooters in the league Steph Curry has a pretty smooth jump shot you know Buddy Heald has a pretty smooth jump shot but you know looking at Halliburton his shot is kind of like a two motion shot where like he kind of sets it up in his arm and then shoots it but, you know, as the saying goes, you know, don't fix something if it isn't broken because he's shooting around 47% from the field and then 42% from three. His on-ball defense is also, in my opinion, one of the best among point guards in the league today as his 6'5 body can keep up with smaller guards. His overall on-ball defense is probably one of the best I've seen this season from a player. And overall, his help defense is pretty great too. So on the downside, he is only 185 pounds, like I said, which can lead to some bigger guards bullying him in the post or even on the perimeter of how Halliburton isn't careful, you know, they can blow by past Halliburton if they're a bigger guard, have a bigger frame. And overall, I mean, Halliburton's gonna have some struggles in the post, not like it's too much of a problem unless they switch a lot of things. But overall, Halliburton does need to put on some weight. So the Pacers do need to make sure that in the future, they build around Tyrese Halliburton. You know, the state of the team right now is definitely not enough to even compete with some of the worst teams in the league. Comparing the Pacers to some bottom feeder teams, you know, the Rockets, they aren't that much better than the Rockets. You know, same thing with OKC, same thing with Detroit, you know, we got all of these teams at the bottom and the paces right now they're definitely not any better than any of the worst teams in the league right now and the draft is going to be very crucial for this team as if they don't land within the top four the draft is going to be 
a huge hit or miss for this team. With the draft being mostly center slash power forwards and, you know, one guard, I think they do really need all the help they can get. I've said this in previous videos too. If they can get Jaden Ivey, if they can get Jabari Smith, Chet, or even Paolo, I would be fine with it as long as they land within the top four. And looking at the lottery odds for the Pacers right now, they are projected to be fifth in the draft, which isn't that great. So hopefully they can get more losses in the next week because they do have like, what, seven to six games left of the season. So in the offseason, they could look to move Brogdon and their pick to move up in the draft. I've been a huge advocate for this move and would be in favor of both teams. You know, they do get a pick, you know, that's going to be pretty high still. Hopefully, it's going to be pretty high. And then Malcolm Brogdon, who pretty much scored 19 points per game this season. This team is definitely going to need a lot more work and overall needs more time. You know, there's a lot of young pieces on this roster. Jalen Smith, Tyrese Halliburton, you know, they got even Goga Bedad, so he's still fairly young. Isaiah Jackson, who still needs some time to improve. And overall, they do have a good future. I just think that they are a lot of pieces away from even contending in the playoffs. And the Pacers are definitely in a weird spot as their roster is made up of some weird pieces. All they really need to do is build around Halliburton and retool the roster in the offseason. And in the near future, they could be in the playoffs. You know, nothing's too guaranteed in this league. But with some pieces, the right pieces especially, get a good small forward, a power forward, and some good bench depth. I think they could be in the playoff contention pretty soon. So that's the video. My name is Princess Empire, and I'm out. Peace.